want to welcome you to another blessed presentation of God's Holy Word with Pastor Omar Tebow. It's recorded live at Philadelphia Christian Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. As always, each audio message is designed to bring you into a deeper knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get into a message that's already in session. If you give me my time in prayer first, if you put me first, listen, 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 revolve everything else around me and your time with me. If you put me first, this is your tithe of time. It's your lifetime. Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. Because we only have a certain amount of time in life. We only have a certain amount of time in the day. We're saying, God, you're so important that I am going to give you a portion of my day solely for you, independently for you. And I'm going to give it to you, God. Knowing that I just got a finite number of days. And when we give him that tithe of time with prayer, the rest is going to be blessed. You see that there? And it's just like when we give him that 10% in the tithe, the rest of the night is going to be blessed. That prayer is a tithe of time to our God. And it should be first. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible says he was withdrawn. Look what it says next. From them. And this is a revelation. From who? From his disciples. You know, you even got to withdraw yourself from Christians. He was withdrawn from them, his disciples. You see? Oh, God. Come on, y'all. This this is where it's at you. This is where it's at. You see? Sometimes you got to withdraw yourself from even your brothers and sisters in Christ to spend time with God. I'm not saying stop coming to church. That's not what I'm saying. Because y'all going to stop coming. Pastor, you told me to cut away, to tear away, Pastor. Not like that. But we have some people outside of Sundays and Tuesdays. They fellowship with Christians, but they don't fellowship with Christ. Let me say that again. They fellowship with Christians. They have you over. They have you. Everybody at their house. They want fellowship. They're going to stay around long. They're going. And listen, that's not wrong. But we got some people. They fellowship with Christians. But Jesus said, what about me? What about my fellowship? And we got to put first things first. We can't miss it, y'all. And if you fellowshipping with Christians without fellowshipping with Christ, the fellowship is not, won't be good when you fellowship with other Christians. No. But, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Sometimes you need to withdraw yourself from the people you're discipling, y'all. You got some people, you, you're growing in the faith and you're pouring into them, you're discipling them. And there are some times, hallelujah, we can always want to be ministering. But we never go back to Christ to be ministered to. And we find ourselves empty in the flesh. You see? Not as productive as we should be. You see? And God is teaching me, y'all, in my... I'm feeling that I'm hitting the second half of ministry right now. I was telling my wife that I'm going from being a young man in the faith to being more of a father in the faith. Where I'm raising up sons and daughters. Amen. Don't start calling me father, please. Don't. This is merely a spiritual example. And when I was a young man in the faith, T, I, I did what young men do. I expended a lot of energy. Preach every Sunday for five years, every Tuesday. Was there every Thursday at prayer. Was there every day for noonday prayer. Expending a whole bunch of energy for five going on six years straight. There is a transition that's occurring in Philadelphia. God is moving me from doing everything myself to raising up faithful men and women that's going to help come alongside. You see, you see what I'm saying here? And we start on Tuesday, hallelujah, we're growing in our teaching gifts. The teachers are growing. 
And that's what I want to do. I want to pour into some men and some women of God, hallelujah, through, the, through my wife's side of ministry, hallelujah. And we don't want to be the only people that could bring a good word or that can, hallelujah, bring down the anointing or preach the hell out of somebody. I, I didn't say that right. But <laughs> cut, cut that out the sermon, will we? I've been talking to Phil a little bit too much. <laughs> Preach them out of hell, huh? <laughs> Goodness, Phil. <laughs> but uh, I'm reaching another, another, another season in ministry, you know, and uh, and that's what we want. We just don't want our teachers to be anointed like Phil and and Brother Ann and, and Brother James Parker and and the rest of them. We want more of them. We don't want one. We want a thousand of them. You understand what I'm saying? That's what we want. Because, listen, as Philadelphia is growing, the demands on me has grown. You see? We not just we don't have just, you know, uh, 50 or 100, Miss Suzanne, where I could do all those things and be at prayer every single day and, and just deal with, with 100 people and stuff like that. The demands are growing. The weight is heavier. You see, and uh, it takes a toll. And sometimes, hallelujah, you just need to tear away. And that's the season I'm figuring out right now. And the tearing away is good, not only for me and my wife, but it's good for you. Because when I tear away, somebody got to step up. Amen. <laughs> so when I tear away, somebody got to glue themselves to it. You see what I'm saying here? And so. And so, 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 you know, that, that's where, that's where I am in ministry, you see, uh, you know, and so, and so I just want to kind of explain where you, where your pastor is, where, where he's at right now, you know, and, uh, and, and, and I just believe that glory to God, you're going to start seeing more people, not all the time, y'all, but more people being able to hallelujah, use their giftings. And me and my wife talked about even on the latest side of ministry and different things and, and so, and so that we can spend the necessary time with the Lord. Because one of the things about this transition is, is that if you continue to try to run like a young man, whoo, when spiritually God moving you up to a father, you know, the grace won't be there, you know. And so, uh, and so, and so we want to, we want to walk wisely. We want to do things right, you know, and it's going to be a blessing. Hallelujah. It's going to be a blessing for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I want I want minister as well to the ministry heads that's in here. Because not only me, I can't be doing ministry all the time. Listen, if 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 I if I if I did it, I would be on the phone all the time. As y'all are growing, my phone rings constantly. From 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 uh new members, current members, and old members that don't even come to Philadelphia anymore, they still call me. Past clients, spiritual and legal. So what I had to do, I had to change my number for a second and kind of just freshen some things up. You see what I'm saying here? Because I would stay on the phone constantly. You see? Constant bombardment, you know? But why not raise up some other people that can disciple and minister and talk on the phone? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Ministry heads, watch yourself. Don't be doing ministry all the time, no. Don't be doing ministry all the time. You're going to suffer for it and your family going to suffer for it. Don't do ministry all the time. We made your ministry head not for you to do everything, but for, for you to allocate other people to do things for you. Ooh, help me somebody. Don't get so busy. I talked about the schoolaholic, the workaholic, but we have some in here, y'all ministry holics. And the negative consequences are just the same. You know, Jesus says, the Bible says he withdrew himself. He was withdrawn from them. What about a stone's cast away? What's a stone's cast, Pastor? How far somebody could throw a stone? 
And the average person, they say, could probably throw a stone about 150, 200 feet. And so what Jesus did, would probably be from one end of this building to the other end, around that way, around that, around that. And so Jesus left his disciples on one end of Gethsemane, and he walked and went kneel down on the other end, about 150, 200 feet away. You see? He got alone with the Father. And boy, if he needed to get alone, boy, we need to get alone, huh? But look what the Bible says. He got uh, from them about a stone's cast away. And he did what? He kneeled down. This is about prayer posture. Somebody say prayer posture. Prayer posture. And there are different postures for prayer. But I want to ask you this morning, have you ever kneeled down before your God? You see? And I'm not talking about in church. We all come from the place we used to kneel and stand, kneel and stand. <laughs> But I'm talking about at your house, in your private time, when nobody else is looking. It's easy to kneel and bow when everybody else is doing it. Just like it's easy, easy to like, act like you know how to dance when everybody else is dancing. You see what I'm saying? But, but when it's by yourself and you're in the, in, in the privacy, you're in the secret place, have you ever just... Just you and God. You see? Kneeling is the third most uh, mentioned posture of prayer in the scriptures. The first is laying out flat, prostrate, just laying out flat. The second is lifting up hands to pray. The third is kneeling. I think it's important for every person to kneel before they make them. If you are physically capable, you're going to have to have some times of prayer when you kneel. They say that the knees are connected to the heart. And when we kneel on our knees, we're telling God that our heart is in a position as well, a posture as well. God wants us to kneel before him. And I know this. Because he says a day is going to come when every knee. But he wants us that know him, his sons and daughters, to kneel before him now. The other is going to be made to kneel. But when we get down, we say, Lord, I willingly kneel before you. You're my savior, you're my master, you're my Lord. And nobody got to make me do this. Yeah. There are times in prayer call when I'm praying and God will remind me in my spirit. I'll be back here in between service like I'm about to go in a second. And I'm just walking around, hallelujah, just kind of praying. And I'm just like, Lord, thank you. Thank you for being with me first service. Oh, God, now we got to do it again second service. <laughs> and I'm just praying, Dominique. And I hear his still, small voice, kneel. Kneel. And when you hear that, you know that ain't a devil. Because the devil never going to tell you to kneel before God. He don't want you to kneel before God. He wants you to kneel before him. But he'll, he'll whisper to me like, okay, okay, you've been praying, standing up for a long time. Listen, on this day right now, I need you to kneel. Get down before me. Humble yourself. Let me know who I am in your life again. So saints of God, the Bible says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. I pray that this message will bless you. But I pray that it will change us. Get us to praying more. Get us to kneeling before him more. I pray that when you leave here that you kneel before him sometime during the day today. You see? I just have on my spirit for it's better to kneel now than to kneel later. Amen. Kneel later. Amen. Kneel later. Amen. 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 
pray that you are blessed, encouraged, and challenged by today's message. As always, we would love for you to fellowship with us in person. Our service times are Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Also on Tuesday's midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. You can check us out on the web 24 hours a day at philadelphiacc.org. Until next time, God bless.